The opening of Grafham Water by His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh was the climax of years of planning to meet the future demands for water in the Anglian region. This need for additional water storage in one of the driest parts of the country was identified in the early 1950s after water shortages were experienced in the Northampton and Cambridgeshire areas. The yield in 1958 from existing reservoirs at Pittsford, Hollowell, Ravensthorpe, Cransley and Thorpe Malzer was 12.5 million gallons a day. But the forecast increase in demand for 1970 was 20 million gallons a day. The planned expansion of Corby, Northampton, Weddingborough and Peterborough together with the new town of Milton Keynes would increase demand for water drastically. The then Great Ouse Water Authority and Mid Northants Water Board joined forces to meet the challenge and a decision was made to build the new reservoir in the Diddington Valley close to the River Great Ouse which was an ideal source for abstraction. The other two important characteristics of the valley were that materials were readily available to build the dam and there was a waterproof layer of clay to prevent the water seeping away. It was also ideally situated to strengthen the water supply network linking the existing Northamptonshire reservoirs. The Diddington Reservoir Scheme was designed to supply 40 million gallons of water a day to Bedford, Luton, Northamptonshire, Cambridgeshire and parts of North London. The finished reservoir would cover 1,570 acres hold 13,000 million gallons of water and the massive dam 80 feet high and one mile long would be built with rolled boulder and Oxford clays with a central rolled clay core. The sound of a klaxon heralded the beginning of Diddington Reservoir with three huge 38 ton earth scrapers starting work simultaneously. The Diddington Brook had to be diverted before work could begin and a new tunnel had to be excavated to carry the pipes, bringing water both in and out of the completed reservoir. A pumping station being built on the bank of the River Great Ouse at Offord would lift the water through three miles of steel pipeline under the Great North Road, under the dam and into the reservoir. Farmers had to work rapidly to harvest the last crops before the land was flooded. One of the attractions of the valley as a reservoir site was that it was sparsely populated, but inevitably one or two houses had to be sacrificed. In 1963, the name of the reservoir was changed from Diddington to Grafham Water by popular local demand. The first water was pumped into Grafham Water in December 1964, making a spectacular sight. While it was filling, the nearby water treatment works was nearing completion. It had been designed to treat a total of 50 million gallons every day. takes great care to protect the River Great Ouse whilst abstracting water by restricting pumping to leave at least 30 million gallons of water per day flowing downstream of offered intake. Water treatment begins in the reservoir itself where nutrient concentrations are reduced through the natural food chain. This, combined with sediments falling to the reservoir bed, is a valuable first stage treatment. Water is pumped from the reservoir to the treatment works via the valve tower. It's drawn off from varying depths, taking advantage of the best quality water available. Once at the treatment works, 
the two main processes are sedimentation and filtration through granular activated carbon. The last stage is the addition of chlorine to ensure a clear, sparkling, bacteria-free final product. The water is distributed through an extensive underground network to over 800,000 customers in five counties, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. The potential of Grafham Water as a major recreation centre was recognised right from the beginning and formed an integral part of the planning. A trout fishery, sailing club and nature reserve were all created while the reservoir filled. <laughs> 70,000 young trout were released into Grafham water a year before the fishing opened to make sure of big catches on the first day of the season. The prestigious Grafham Sailing Club was established on the South Shore, with launching and slipways for up to 1,000 craft. At the western end of the reservoir, 370 acres were set aside for a nature reserve. the importance of which was recognised by the late Sir Peter Scott when he opened it. All was ready in July 1966 for the visit of His Royal Highness Prince Philip. Thousands of people turned out on this momentous occasion. As Prince Philip declared Grafham Water open, a fleet of 100 yachts, led by famous helmsman Arthur Fox in the Prince's Yacht Cowslip, sailed out across Grafham Water for the first time. Giving the royal seal of approval, the Prince said, Grafham Water is one of the most practical, enlightened and far-sighted cooperative enterprises ever undertaken by a group of local authorities. Since 1974, Anglian Water has ensured that the reservoir has met the combined challenges of demand from growing population and increased industrial production. Recent developments in water engineering and technology, such as filtration through granular activated carbon, have enabled Anglian Water to maintain and improve its high standards of service to its customers. Today, this massive reservoir is operated through a highly sophisticated control system linking river intakes, pumping stations, water treatment processes, and the intricate distribution network. Not only does Grafham Water achieve its prime objective of meeting water supply demands, but it has also become an important recreation centre, hosting events including the World Fly Fishing Championships. The Olympic sailing team has also trained here and sailors from all over the country compete in numerous national competitions. Grafham Water is also well established as a national bird watching centre and site of special scientific interest. So, what of the future? Anglian Water will continue to provide sporting and leisure opportunities whilst protecting the natural environment and most importantly ensuring reliable water supplies for future generations.